Hey guys, welcome to episode number 411. Today is Tuesday, so I have another tank tip for you. And today, I wanted to share with you 10 things you should look for when buying a house to make sure that it's going to be a place that you can build a fish room. This is especially true in the north with really cold winters because you buy a house and then all of a sudden you get to the point where it's zero degrees outside and you realize it's gonna cost you a fortune to heat a tank in a cold basement. Um, happens more often than you think and uh, it's sort of a shock the first time you look at your electric bill or your heating bill and you realize that your aquariums might be costing you more than they're worth. And that's never a good thing. So, 10 things you should look for when buying a house to make sure that you have a great environment for a fish room. Again, this applies mostly to the north where you're going to have colder temperatures. If you live in the middle of a desert, not all of these are gonna apply. All right, first thing you're gonna look for is a dry basement. So, when you walk into the basement of the house that you're looking at, Make sure that there are no water marks on the floor. Make sure that there is no sump pump on the floor. And sometimes in the corner of a basement, you'll see a little reservoir dug into the ground and there's a sump pump in it. If there's one of those, that means that you're probably in a flood zone and um, at some point or another, there's going to be water seeping up into your basement. And that's a no-no because if you have any stands, if they're wooden or metal and they get wet, that's gonna be uh, no good. So, dry basement. Um, that also applies to the walls. Um, you wanna make sure that there are no cracks in the walls, that there are no leaks, there are no drips, no drip marks on the walls. Um, you want to make sure the basement is completely dry. If you walk into the basement and it's musty, if it's, uh, you know, sort of, um, if there are signs that there have been water down there, you might want to reconsider. And if it has a dirt floor, just say no. All right, number two, um, you wanna make sure that you are below grade. If you really wanna keep as much heat in, you wanna be below grade. Now, what I mean by that is this basement is actually underground. Most of it is underground. If we come over here, you can see these windows are basically um, where the, the ground level starts. So uh, a good three quarters of this basement is dug into the ground. And what that's gonna do is it's going to insulate um, the basement. If all of your uh, basement is above ground and uh, you're, you would like basically look out here uh, onto a backyard and you could just walk straight out, it means that the cold air that's whipping by the side of the house, by the side of the foundation, is going to actually take a lot of the heat with it. And um, you're, you're less likely to be able to retain heat if you are above ground. All right, number three is a walkout or a large bulkhead. Now, obviously with number two, I said you wanted to be below grade if possible, um, but walkout basements have their advantages. Obviously, if you have a lot of aquariums, if you have a lot of equipment, it's a lot easier if you can just walk straight out into a backyard uh, through a set of doors. This right here is actually a set of doors that I built and uh, it goes to an oversized bulkhead. So this is really well insulated and uh, it's a set of double doors. It's an oversized bulkhead. I got my 300 gallon stock tank through this bulkhead. So that gives you a sense for how large that is. So just keep in mind, you want really easy access to be able to bring things in and out of a fish room, especially if it's heavy, especially if it's made of glass, you wanna make sure that's as easy as possible. Number four, you want an exposed ceiling. If you look up and you see a drop ceiling, that's going to be a recipe for mold um, because you've got warm, uh, air that has condensation in it and um, you know there's little airflow going through the rafters if you have a drop ceiling so the better option is to have an exposed ceiling um, and then add a dehumidifier or a heat recovery ventilator to the room so that you can get that moisture out of the air 
You don't want any dead spots. You want to be able to push some air around with fans and uh, make sure that you don't have spots that just sort of sit and soak and get wet because you're going to get mold buildup in those places. If you want to, you can insulate. If you want to, you can add vapor barriers to your ceiling. Um, there are products that uh, you can use uh, similar to like things that are used for kitchens, uh, like industrial kitchens and baths and things like that, which are sort of like a, a plastic uh, coating. There are a whole bunch of different ways you can finish a ceiling, but the, the ceiling that you're most likely to find is a drop ceiling, and those are really no good. All right, number five is a floor drain or a laundry drain. Now, ideally, you would want a floor drain, um, and that would be the case if uh, if you're basically above, uh, you know, if you're above grade, or if um, you sort of like slope down to the street. If your house is up on a hill, you might actually have a drain right in the floor um, of of your basement, and that's pretty good, uh, a pretty good option for a fish room. Um, because you can drain your water, your wastewater, directly to something like that. But uh, the next best thing is a laundry hookup. And uh, what you want to look for is the main stack in your house um, for your wastewater. And this is what it looks like in my house. In newer houses, this is probably a very large piece of PVC that sort of comes down. And this actually goes out to the back of the house because um, we have septic. If you're on sewer, it might go out to the front of the house. So just keep that in mind. Those are the two places you'd want to look for this. And um, this is where the, the laundry hooks up. So we've got our, our washer and dryer here. And uh, this is the laundry hook up here. And I was able to add an attachment here so that I've got my sump pumps uh, as well as my laundry plumbed into this. So one of those uh, three outlets is for my laundry and the other two are for my sump pumps. Um, this is the sump pump that goes with my slop sink. Again, um, <laughs> you need to clean up around here. But the idea is, um, you know, I can, I can use water in here. It uh, goes over to here as my wastewater barrel. I've got a sump pump that pumps it up and then I can get rid of it. And just the same way over here, I've got my three barrel sump system. And uh, the third barrel here is a waste barrel. I've got a sump pump in there. And again, you'll see the garden hose line goes up and over. And then I can get rid of my wastewater. And that's really important in a fish room, having a place to get rid of your wastewater. Otherwise, you're gonna be carrying buckets for the rest of your life, and you don't wanna do that. All right, next up is hot water and cold water. Let's stay right here while we're here. You want hot water and cold water lines in your basement, if at all possible. And if it already has a utility sink, even better, because you're gonna need that too. Um, I use this with my Python to do some water changes or some top offs every once in a while. And uh, as you can see here, I have my hot water and my cold water lines. And I've just teed those off so that one of those sides goes to the uh, washer like it normally would uh, in a normal basement. And then the other side of that tee um, goes to my slop sink. So I was able to sort of tee off and get those two water supplies. So, um, you know, we're not affecting anything here. We've got the, the laundry that can run just fine and I can, I can run this sink at the same time just fine as well. So uh, you need that water source, you need that water source in a basement for a fish room. So make sure you have both hot water and cold water so you can mix and uh, get the exact right temperature so you can do your water changes. Also you'll note here the hot and cold water lines allowed me to hook up a third thing here to the cold water which is my drip system. And I've shot videos on how this works in the past, so you can go watch those. But having a cold water line means I'm able to drip 40 gallons of fresh water through a three-stage carbon filter and get that into my aquariums. And because I have a sump pump over here, which is automatically pumping my wastewater out, I'm automatically changing water down here. So really, really important to have that 
cold water line down in the basement as well. All right, number seven is energy efficient windows and doors. As you can see here, these are new windows. Uh, I think they're the double pane. Um, I've got great stuff sort of uh, foamed in all around it. And uh, those uh, I think were put in three years ago. So, um, you know, if you've got like a really old basement, you've probably got like a single pane glass window. If you put your hand over it and it's cold outside, you can probably feel some air coming through it. Um, you know, or at least it's, it's not as energy efficient as it could be. Some of the largest, um, you know, places that you're going to lose heat and lose energy is out of your windows and doors. So definitely, definitely make sure that those are as energy efficient and sealed as possible. The back side of this door, again, has rigid foam insulation on the entire surface so that it's keeping as much heat in here as possible. And that's super, super important to uh, the success of a fish room. You want to keep that uh, hot air in and you want to keep the cold air out. So any place you have a leak is uh, a place where you're losing energy and it's going to cost you a lot of money in the long run. All right, number eight is updated electrical wi and wiring. Um, so what you're going to do is go over into the corner of your house wherever the uh, the electrical comes in uh, off the street and uh, what you want to do is just check to make sure you have an updated electrical box and uh, updated wiring. Uh, some of this wiring is a little bit older, some of it is a little bit newer. This electrical box is not uh, the newest thing by any stretch of the imagination but it's also not uh, super old either. So. Uh, you definitely gonna want to check that out. That's something that an electrician can obviously swap out. Um, but keep that in mind when you're running a lot of pumps and heaters and lights and all of those things, it does consume quite a bit of electricity. You want to make sure that those wires are in good shape and that you're not overloading those uh, because it can potentially create a uh, fire hazard. So. Just check those out. It's something that can obviously be swapped out, but just check it out. Number nine is an updated heating system with a hot water tank, if possible. Uh, mine is in the other room, actually, and it's dark over there, so I won't show that, but I have an updated heating system. It's a, a condensing hot water boiler. It's probably one of the most efficient ones on the market, and uh, that means that uh, I'm using gas to heat my hot water and I'm able to um, do a water change if I wanted to um, and do that fairly efficiently. If you're mixing water, if you're mixing hot and cold water and doing water changes, having a reliable hot water system and heating system is really important uh, to keeping the, the temperature in the air warm and also for doing large water changes. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have cold showers uh, or your fish are going to have cold water and they're not going to be happy either. Um, interestingly of note here, since I do have the drip system, I am dripping 40 gallons per day of cold water in this system, but because it's dripping so slow, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the overall temperature in the system. So uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. All right, and then number 10 is just to fully fully insulate the basement. Insulate the fish room. Whatever room it is you're using, make sure that it's fully insulated. And I would say after the windows and doors, the number one uh, place you want to look are the rim joists. And I've done a video on these before, uh, but essentially it's the space right above where the cement ends and right where the wooden frame to the house starts. And that's usually completely uninsulated. And you're gonna get a lot of heat loss through there. So before you put a single tank down in the basement, make sure you go around the entire perimeter of the inside of the house and check. Uh, if you need to spray foam it, you can spray foam it. If you wanna put rigid insulation in, do that. Um, I have went ahead and put um, uh, 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 what is it, plasterboard over, over the top of all of this to try to uh, get it to be as um, 
fireproof as, as possible, but you can see there's some wires that are sort of in the way in some places. And um, obviously my wire management is not um, up to par, but uh, this is the number one place you want to look after the windows and doors to make sure that you're fully insulated. So guys, that's 10, that's 10 items, 10 things you should look for. If you walk into a new house, when you're considering putting a fish room in, consider those 10 things and uh, you really can't go wrong. So anyways guys, hope you enjoyed. I know it was a little long winded, but I think all of those things are pretty important considerations when looking to make such a big investment. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.